Hi guys, it's Nat here. Hope you're all doing well. I am on for my design team project for Tracy Fox Creative for the month of March. Keep going to say February. I just can't believe how quick the months and years go once you get a bit older. Anyway, enough whinging about that. Uh, yeah, so for this month, I have decided to use the beautiful Mycologist's Notebook Kit. So this is designed to be pages in Tall Skinny Journal, as you can see here, which is not what I'll be doing with it, just a word of warning. But what I have done is printed out the actual journal pages on tea dyed paper, and I've done them in just a normal print. So usually I do my digitals on photo mat paper with the photo mat settings. And that gives you the really rich, vibrant colours in that. But I wanted this to be dulled down and grungy. -ish. So I have done it in um, on the normal copy paper with just the normal settings. And I love the way it's turned out. So I did print these double-sided. Um, I do have a border on my pages, but that's all right. So I've put that page on the back. I tried to do a page that has sort of pictures and that and then a blankish page on the other side because being the thinner paper, you can see the um, print through a bit. But it's just what I want for the project that I'm going to do. Now, this kit does have um, a lot of pages. As usual, it has a lot of ephemera in that. I haven't printed it all out. I think I'll pr print the ephemera as I need it but I'll show you what I have done. So I've got those pages. So of course, if you did these on your normal photo mat that hasn't been tea dyed, you'd get a lot brighter, richer colors in your photographs and that. Now, some of my corners and that, I do have some ink stains, but they're going to add to the look that I want. That is because they're tea dyed papers they're still a bit wrinkly in some spots, which my printer doesn't like. So it just chews them up a bit and puts some ink stains on them. But I think that adds to the look, really. So that is fine. Beautiful grungy pages. And then I did print out two of the ephemera pages here and I did them on my transparency. Thought that would be fun to have a bit of a play around with. They, they are like negatives anyway, so um, I thought why not put them on the transparency. So I found this transparency paper in a second hand shop, which was really handy. And it actually stated on the pack that it was for inkjet printing, which is great because that's what I have. So that's the other one I did, the other ephemera sheet. So I can play around with those. And then I did this ephemera sheet from the kit. Again, It um, because it's tea dyed, it got a little bit mangled, but we'll be cutting those bits off anyway. And this was printed on my cardstock, tea dyed cardstock. And it's a little bit shorter than the A4 paper, so it did mess the edges of some of the prints, but that's all right. So that'll be fun to make some embellishments with. So I also grabbed her Toadstool Fussy Cut Digital, which has these two pages. And again, I did print them with the normal setting and I've done them on the tea dyed cardstock. Just wanted them to be a bit more stable to make some embellishments with. I love the way they've turned out on the tea dyed papers. So that gives you a bit of a hint of what I'll be doing. So we will get on and do a project with that while I have your attention. So I've got my big shot out and I am just using that die. It's a Polaroid die uh, to cut out a Polaroid piece from my hanging file folder. Now I'm going to trace around that piece on the hanging file folder again uh, to create a backing piece for it. 
So I'm pretty sure that's a global land dye. If I remember, I will link it below for you. So I want to get some colour onto my pieces there. So as usual, I'm doing some ink smushing using my forest moss there just to get some greenish mossy tones. So I just spray it onto the packaging, then spray a bit of water on. So I've got some brown there. So I'm just doing one side of both pieces. One will be for the back and one will be for the front. Get a bit of a brown that I think is going to show up a bit more. So I want it a little bit more grungy, so I grabbed my black acrylic. I made this up with some water when I was doing the uh, mass making, where I made all the paper and that for this project. So then I decide that I want my Polaroid to be sort of see-through, so I use the backing piece that I cut out uh, with the die again to cut the window out of that as well. I'm always changing my mind and having to redo everything. Initially, I cut them out of manila folder, but I like them better out of the hanging file folder. So I've got my book covers here that I'm using, and I did have to cut these down, and I had a bit of the off cut there. I am just folding over, I think it's leather that was used for the spine. I'm just folding the piece over there and sticking it down. It's cracking all over the place in that, but I don't mind. It just adds to the sort of grungy look. And I wanted to keep as much as fit as I could because I love the way it looks. So I did prep all of these pieces with some matte medium just to seal them. So these are fly pages from another antique book and I want to use them on my inside covers. Just measuring them up against the cover to know how long I want them to be. And then I can cut them down. I just like the colour and the pattern. Uh, it goes nicely with the theme that I'm doing. The ink around the edges of the pages. And then I decide to ink around the inside of the covers there. And then I decide to ink around the outside of the cover pieces. <laughs> I love how I wipe them down so that I look dirty and then I ink them up so they look dirty. But anyway, that's just what we do, isn't it? So now I'm using my Helmar Tacky Glue just to attach the inside cover pieces. As you can see, they're not quite the right size, but I will add another piece to the sides there to cover it over. So now I've got the page that I printed out on the transparency from the Mycologist's notebook kit. And I'm just cutting out one of the pieces and it will fit nicely into my window. Using some tacky glue again to adhere it to the first piece. And then, as usual, I remember that I haven't inked my window. Um, now, it doesn't seem too bad, but it's amazing what a difference it makes when you do ink inside the windows there. So I rip it up. <laughs> I 
and use some brown and then I go around it with some black as well because it wasn't quite dark enough for my liking. So then I have to reapply the glue to stick it back down again. I do that every time I make a slide, I forget to ink the windows and yeah, it does make a difference. So I remember to ink the other window. And then I can stick the two pieces together. But as I put them together, they're not even. And I think, oh, that's actually not too bad because I'm trying so hard not to make things all straight and nice and on every page of this journal. So I decide that I might stick them together a bit uneven. Also, the glue is sticking out the edges there a bit, so I just wiped off with my finger a little bit. Then ink around the edges of both sides with my black. So back to the inside covers, and I found some of my sprayed paper scraps there, and I'm just going to add a piece of that to both sides of my covers. Just to fill in the gap there and have it not look so white and bright. It's been piles of fun playing around with all these sprayed paper scraps. And I'm still going to have piles left over for future projects as well. So I'm keeping inside covers pretty plain for now. I'm not sure what I want to add to them at this point. So back to the front cover and I do want to create a pocket for our slide. So I've got this material, some sort of embroidering material. It's nice, thick and chunky it is. And I've got a sprayed bit of hanging file folder there and I want to back it onto that just so that it creates a smooth environment for me to slip my slide in and out. So I'm just tacking it down with my glue first and I will go off afterwards and do a zigzag stitch around it to make sure it stays on. So I want to stick it down, but I'm using these material pieces to uh, bind my covers together. So um, I'm not sure where I, for, with my placement for them, uh, what I'm going to do at this point. So I decide I'll slip one of them down under the pocket. So I need to attach those to the front cover first. Um, because I only sprayed one side of them, they're a bit bright on the other side. So I'm just going in with my oxide there to add a bit of colour. Because we will see parts of this on the inside of our journal when we open it up. And then I've got my stain stamps from Kaiser Craft and I'm just using those to add a bit of mess. <laughs> I mean, yeah, get bored up and being told that making a mess isn't a good thing. So it's hard to let go and um, purposely make a mess, but I'm trying. <laughs> so these bits are just cut out of some of my um, sprayed material that I did on a previous video, which I'll link down below. So I did go and zigzag stitch around those pieces just so that they don't fray too much as we will be binding our signatures into them as well. So I um, want to make sure that they do hold together. Just using my fabric glue there to adhere them to the front cover. 
I was going to sew them onto the front cover to make them really nice and sturdy, but I don't want to kill my sewing machine. It probably would be fine, but I decide instead I will put some holes in with some um, eyelets. So I've got my cropper doll there, which just fits over, and I just roughly put a dot where I wanted my holes. All the stuff, because I'm cutting through the fabric as well, it sticks in the hole really well, so I have to keep digging it out. And the eyelets I'm using are a little bit longer than usual, which is good for this kind of project. So I'm always putting holes in covers and realising my eyelets don't go all the way through. But because I added the fabric, these ones don't go all the way through. And I'm struggling, even though the hole's the right size, I can't seem to push it into the hole. So I bring out the big guns there, <laughs> my big bite. And I just sort of lay the eyelet on top of the hole and use a big bite to push it in there. So it doesn't appear that it's come all the way through, but it might have under the paper that I added. I'm not sure, but it's definitely in there. So, and I don't see it coming out in a hurry, so I think that'll be fine. So I finished putting the eyelets in and then I can stick my pocket down. So I just adhere the three sides down so it's open up the top. So I can slip my slide in and out now, but I want to put this little mushroom label on. I used my old-fashioned Dymo to create that. I just struggled to get the backing off. And they are really, really sticky, but I still don't trust them to stay on, so I do add glue to the back of them. Now, it did cut, um, where it sort of cut the label, there's that little bit left. And I don't like that it cut it so close to the last M there, so I'm adding that little bit as well. Because I like the way it looks better. And that's the slide pretty well done. Now we're on to our tag, so I do want to hang this from the cover, so I want to put a hole in the tag and then a hole in the cover as well. And I will again use the same eyelets in both of those holes, uh, but fortunately because I'm not putting the fabric on top, the eyelets go through nicely this time and I can use my normal cropper dial for that. So to embellish my tag, I've got these little bits of negative that I had lying around. One of the beautiful little pictures from the ephemera from the Mycologist notebook kit. And I know I had something to put underneath them, but do you think I can find the piece? So I do have to go searching to find another piece. So I've got some book spine there. A real mangled piece of book spine. Um, interior <laughs> mesh. So I layer the picture on top of that and then I'm just looking at the other pieces that I've got here and I find this little label that I got out of a book which is all ripped and I think that'll go nicely. And I've got another bit of the paper from a book spine there that I might layer it all up on as well. defining the edges with the ink as always and then I'll layer my pieces up So I just want my little um, 
perforated pieces sort of sticking out underneath the book spine. So I have to place the book spine down to be able to see where to place the negative pieces. Then I remember that I want the label just under my um, negative as well and I accidentally moved my negative a bit much so I do re-adhere that. Then I can stick my focal point on, but I do have some of my off cuts of cotton from the sewing machine hanging around on my desk. So any opportunity, I use that stuff up. So I'm sticking just a few wisps of it underneath, which look really cool. And I just grab some of the string that I've got in my scrap drawer when I get sent things and that if they have anything like that on them I cut it off and put it in my scrap drawer to use I just tie a knot in that and that holds my tag to my cover so then I have uh, these scrappy embellishments that I made in my video as well previously and I find that little one and I thought it would look really cool on the pocket there so I do add that making sure I don't put it on straight <laughs> and then on my desk I have these uh, little negative pieces sitting around as well from the kit that I printed out um, and I decide I like the look of that one up there so I do add that too. So I think I've finished my cover piece now or cover pieces I should say. I haven't put the back together because I'll wait till I finish the signatures and then I'll put them down and I can adjust how tight these bits are before I attach them to the back. But I will attach them in the same manner. So that was great fun. So thank you Tracy for the kit. So it's a mycologist's notebook kit. Um, and I'm also using her, I think I said at the start, the Fussy Cut Mushroom Kit, but it's Fussy Cut Toadstools, I'm pretty sure. So I'll link those kits down below. Um, so uh, you might have noticed that my eyelets didn't go all the way through the cover. Uh, they would have until I put the fabric on and then, of course, I added extra bulk. I thought they'd squished down enough. Now they might have under the paper there, it's hard to tell, but they're in there <laughs> and we have glued the fabric down. So it's not going to shift in a hurry anyway. The eyelets are just to ensure that it stays down when we're opening and closing. I was going to sew this onto the cover, but I like the look of the eyelets. They're a bit crooked, but I don't mind. Um, I'm trying hard, if you didn't notice, like with this and even with that, to not necessarily do things straight or properly because it is a more grungy style. I do struggle with that a lot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's taken me time <laughs> to do things sort of not even. <laughs> but I'm having so much fun with this. Uh, it's great just grabbing scraps and that and feeling like you don't have to make things, try and make them perfect. Uh, when I do try, it definitely isn't perfect anyway. So, so there's bits fraying everywhere, crooked bits, broken bits, scrappy stained pieces, and I am loving that. So I did have to cut down these covers initially, and I kept the bits that I cut off at the bottom, and I decided to use one of them to make the tag. Um, at the start, you saw me fold it over and glue it down. It did rip and everything. It's so fragile, but I don't care. And it will probably rip more, and I don't care. It's the same with the edges that I cut. I didn't cover over them. I did seal 
the cover. I gave it a wipe down because it's an antique book cover. It was dirty and that. So I gave it a wipe down, let it dry and then sealed it with some matte medium just to hopefully make its life a little longer and make it easier to keep clean. Uh, but that's all I did prior to doing what I did with you guys. So yeah, nice little tag can be written on the back of. Great way to use up that scrap piece. And uh, one of the beautiful pictures out of the kit. Use some of my photo negatives, some book spine, a little book that I ripped out of when I'm taking books apart. If they've got little labels and that in, I try and get them out. This one didn't come out whole, but it doesn't matter. Still use it. It's beautiful font there. Uh, these were the out of the mycologist notebook and I printed them onto transparency. So that worked nice and I like that idea for the front and I just used the hanging file folder which I inked up to make it a little grungy. I used some of my inked up file folder under here too just to make a nice smooth backing for this pocket so I could slip this in and out. Um, and that is your, I don't know what you call this. If someone knows, let me know. I just call them all Ada cloth because they're all sort of cross-stitch cloth. But I assume this is for latch hook or you know, like rug hooking or something like that because it's a very uh, wide one. Um, that's one of the scrappies I made in my mass making. I've put a lot of the bits and pieces in this journal that I did for my mass making video. If I remember, I will try and link that down below as well in case you want to have a look. That's where I sprayed and coloured my papers and my fabrics and I did make some, a whole pile of embellishments as well and a lot of those are going into this. So now with the closure I'm doing or the spine that I'm doing, I'm not following any particular tutorial. I have seen pictures of people's open spine journals. I'm going to try something along those lines. Not sure how it's gonna work or if it's gonna work, but we'll give it a go. But as I said, I'm not finishing this off until I know how fat my signatures are. And then I will uh, do the same that I've done here with the back piece as well. So I'll just stick that on and attach the eyelets as well. And we'll have the signatures in between. So yeah, I love that. I think that looks really cool. And I just used the label maker to make that label. And it had cut it off short there. So I just added the piece that it cut off. Um, because I didn't like it cut off right there and even though it doesn't look that good I'm going for that imperfect style anyway now on the inside I've got these these are the inside fly pages of another probably antique book which I cut down to fit in there and they didn't fit perfectly so I used some of my dyed paper just to fill in the gaps there and I love the way that looks. That's going to go nicely with my signatures. And I attached the tag with some more of my eyelets and just a bit of string because that looks nice and grungy as well. So I hope you enjoyed that and it gave you some ideas. I'm having so much fun with this. So you can check out the links to Tracy's shop and the other design team members down below. There's always links to Tracy's social media as well and my information. Uh, so take care, happy crafting, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.